Welcome to Easy Elim Learning Simplified. My name is Ruth and today we are going to be discussing on the topic the structure of the atom and the periodic table and this is a form 2 topic and the subtopic for the day will be the periodic table. So previously we talked about isotopes and we were able to, to calculate different questions that can be tested on isotopes. So today we look at the periodic table. We are going to group different elements into groups and periods. Transitional metals are lanthanides and actinides. Then we are also going to get a chance to practice on how to identify these groups and periods. So first we we'll start with the periodic table. The periodic table was it's a, it's, a, it's showing the arrangement of ele elements in order of their relative atomic masses that we have just discussed in the previous lesson. It was based in the ideas of Dimitri. Dimitri is the one who uh, was able to come up with the final periodic table. Different versions came up in different uh, timelines uh, during the discoveries. And finally, he was able to put it into the modern periodic table that we have. So, Modern periodic table is, is based on the law that states that properties of elements are a periodic function of their relative atomic masses. And uh, the law itself, the one that we use currently, states that the properties of elements are periodic functions of the atomic numbers. So the Dimitri's law uh, considered that the properties of elements would be a periodic functions of the masses, while the current one would consider the atomic numbers. So the periodic table is usually designed in vertical columns. These vertical columns are referred to as groups. And then we have the horizontal rows, the ones that um, I'm showing, which are referred to as period. So uh, groups are vertical in column and they are usually written in Roman numbers. So we have group one, group two, uh, group three. We usually jump these groups, uh, but this is group 13. But in high school, you talk about group three because you're not going to be discussing this group of elements, which we call transitional elements. And then group four. Uh, group 5, group 6, uh, group 7, and then we have the group 8. So we usually use Roman numbers to represent groups, don't forget. And group 8 is also known as group 0 because electron, the electrons in this group do not lose or gain, or these group members have a tendency not to lose or gain electrons. So in between group two and group three, we have a group of elements, as we said, referred to as transitional metals. These groups also are given some chemical family names. So the first group is referred to as alkaline. The second group is referred to as alkaline earth. metals and then the third group is referred to as the boron group the third group is uh, fourth group is referred to as the carbon group or it is also referred to as carbonoids the third group is referred to as nitrogen group or nitrogenoids And then uh, the sixth group is referred to as the oxygen group or calcogens. Group seven is called the halogens. And finally, group eight is called the noble gases. 
So those are the chemical family names. We are going to go to each chemical uh, family in details and their properties later on in another topic in Form 2. Next, we go to the periods. We said the periods are formed from the horizontal rows, these horizontal rows, and they usually eight in number. They usually eight in number because we have extra two, the ones that are in the lanthanides and actinides, which is a group uh, that is in the transitional element, but it is so large, so it's put aside. And the transitional metals are usually in between group two and group three, as we initially talked. They're usually made up of elements called transition metals which have variable valences, as you later on also discuss when we get to valences. They're usually sometimes called D-block elements. And later on, we have lanthanides and actinides. They are part of the transitional metal, but they're usually referred to as the Hina transition because there are so many. And they usually are 14 of them. Uh, from cerium to latutium, and you can see them from the periodic table, the lanthanide and actinides. And actinides also are 14 from thorium to laurentium. Although we are not going to pay a lot of attention to them at this level, uh, we'll discuss them later in another level. So when you are placing elements in the periodic table, you place them depending on the electronic arrangement. So first of all, to place an element in a period, you need to look at the number of energy levels. So the number of energy levels will be equal to the period it belongs to. And not to forget the periods are actually represented by normal numbers. So an example is the elements provided uh, lithium is atomic number 3, so the electronic arrangement will be 2.1. We discussed this in the previous videos. So if you look, if you count the number of energy levels or shell, we have 1, 2, so it has 2 energy levels, so it is period number 2. Sodium is atomic number 11, so the configuration is 2, 8, 1. So it has a total of three energy levels, one, two, three. So the period is period three. Calcium is two, eight, eight, two. So it has one, two, three, four shells or energy levels. So it's period number four. Nitrogen is atomic number seven. So it has two, five. So it has one, two shells. So two energy levels, so it is in period two as well. Helium has two electrons because it's atomic number two, so it remains two. So it has only one shell, so it's energy shell one, so it is in period one. So that is some of the examples on how we can place electrons in the periodic table in accordance to periods. Next, uh, let's discuss on how we can put groups on the periodic table. When we are grouping elements, they are governed by the outermost energy level. So we calculate the number of electrons in the outermost energy level, and that is where the group to which that element belongs to. Example, if we look at potassium with atomic number 9, the configuration is going to be 2, 8, eight one so check out the video on this so the outermost energy level has one electron so it's going to be in group one roman number aluminium has the configuration of two eight three so the last energy level has three electrons so it is in group three remember roman numbers silicon is two 0.8.4 from the atomic number, which is the number of electrons. Um, so the outermost energy level has four electrons, so it's going to be in group four. 
oxygen atomic number 8 protons 8 electrons 8 so it is 2.6 so on the outermost shell it has six electrons so it is going to be in group 6 finally chlorine which is atomic number 17 so the configuration is going to be 2 8 7 so the outermost shell has seven electrons so it's going to be in group seven and that ends so question number one with reference to its atomic number of one uh, explain why hydrogen has been placed either in group one and group seven of the periodic table so we know hydrogen is atomic number one uh, so we are going to discuss this later on in details. Uh, hydrogen can lose one electron. So it can be placed in group one. It can also gain one electron. So it can also be placed in group seven. Although we are not going to get into details with that, we are going to discuss it when we get to formation of ions. The next question is an element Y as electronic configuration of 2.8.5. Which period of the periodic table does it belong? So we said when you are calculating the period, uh, when you are identifying the period to which an element belongs, we calculate the number of energy shells. So the energy shells that are present are 1, 2, 3. So we have three shells. So it means that it is going to be in period 3. The table below gives elements represented by letter T, U, V, W, X, and Y, uh, the atomic numbers. So electron arrangement uh, for T is going to be... So we are using this information to complete the table and then identify the period uh, to which each element belongs to. So element T has a configuration of 2, 8, 2. Element U is going to be 2, 8, 3. Element V is going to be 2, 8, 4. Element W is going to be 2, 8, 5. Element X is going to be 2, 8, 6. Element Y, 2, 8, 7. All these elements belong to period 3. Why? Because they all have three energy levels or energy shells. So that brings us to the end. Uh, see you in the next lesson.